everyone. Uh, I have to film this again. As you can see, it's a bit darker um, than you'll see in the rest of the video. I got back when I was editing, I realized the first two segments that I filmed had absolutely no sound on it. Not sure what happens, but anyways, here we are. So today we're gonna talk about the difference between SRT or SRS, so stationary rope technique or single rope technique or stationary rope system or um, DDRT or MRS, so double rope technique or moving rope system, whatever you call it. Um, yeah, I prefer DDRT and SRT, but that was what I was taught. Um, times have changed, just really depends on what you want to say. Anywho, so what we're going to talk about is the difference, like I said. So here I have the zigzag on the Japora rope, uh, which is a bit of a more of a new age thing. This is the newer updated zigzag version. And here I have the rope wrench. This is a classic uh, single rope system, widely used, widely known, simple, easy to use. Anyways, <clears throat> so here the zigzag is just a mechanical hitch on a double rope system. So the difference between a double rope system and a single rope system is that this rope is moving. As you can see, this rope does not. Yes, there's two legs of rope, but this is just my retrieval end. So if I pull this, that's gonna go up because what I have up top is just a cinched anchor. Um, we, we can go into anchors another day, but uh, basically what we have here is this stays still while this can move. So your weight is distribu distributed between both legs of the rope. This is the friction bit. So that's what's gonna hold you onto the rope. Um, I'm gonna attach to this point and both legs obviously are supporting me. So as I'm moving about, that rope is going over top of the limb back and forth, depending on what way I'm going, either up or down. So it's important that you use a friction saver or friction management system at that anchor. You don't wanna move any more than 15 feet on a natural crotch uh, or a natural union because that is gonna burn the cambium layer on that branch. If you're removing the tree, yeah, no big deal, but you're still, you're gonna wear and tear on your rope and that's not necessary if you, if you just uh, install a cambium saver and I'll do, um, a ring and ring saber from the ground in a later video because that is a total cool magic trick. So that is the moving rope system or double rope system. For your single rope system, obviously we only have the one leg of rope. <clears throat> this leg, like I said, is the retrieval side um, in the cinched system. So here we have a hitch, similar to if I just used a, a hitch with a hitch climber pulley on this side. But what I have different is this. This is my friction device. So that is gonna take approximately 50% of my weight. So when I'm going up, it goes into that position. So it flips down. When I weight it and I'm coming down, it goes into a working position. So what is in this rope wrench, uh, it's, it's a genius thing designed by Kevin Bingham in, uh, in America, is we have a bollard, so a bit of a pulley system here. And then we have a slick pin. So that pin comes out so you can install the rope onto it. So as you're going up, like I said, and then we go into there. So that creates an S bend and that's creating friction and taking the weight off of the hitch. Cause if you just climbed on just the hitch, it would burn out really quick and you'd be replacing hitches all the time and potentially putting yourself in danger. So that is the long and the short of how a rope wrench works. Um, later on in the video, I think I demonstrate the akimbo um, and then also the chicane with the zigzag. So turning a double system into a single system or vice versa. Um, a lot of people like to, to work a tree on a double system, so it's nice being able to use one device, which is including one more, and then you can send on the chicane and then swap back to your, your double and work the tree. I prefer to climb um, mostly on single rope, depending on uh, how many redirects and things I need to do, but uh, that is pretty simple. I don't have a rope runner, else I'd show that. Um, it is in the shed, we have one of the old ones but that is basically the difference. So just to recap, single rope, both use one rope, but single rope is you're only using this one leg of rope. Moving rope or double rope, you're using both sides and it moves over your union, all right? So now that we've gone over each system, let's talk about how to get into the tree using each system. So I'm gonna start with a double rope. So I'm just gonna bring it down to myself up into my bridge, tension it up, all right, so I'm going to check my anchor, happy with that. So to get into the tree, since I'm not against the stem, I'm going to have to hip thrust up in no man's land. 
So it's gonna look awkward and it's not very nice, but hey, this is how some people do. So I'm gonna pull down on the running side of the rope here. I'm gonna pop my hips at the same time. So I'm gonna pull and pop. I'm gonna feed the rope through, pull and pop. All right, it's absolutely taxing on yourself. It is not the nicest, but hey, if that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. Um, you can also use a foot ascender. So I'll cinch back up. So I just take my cam, open it up, lock that into place. I use the CT because it's got, it doesn't pop out. Right? So what I'm going to do, kind of the same thing. I can do a sit stand until I get a bit more rope or you can get your groundy to hold the rope for you. Then you're just going to go like that. You're going to have one giant quad at the end of this. Right? So that is up. I'm using a double rope system if you're not against the tree. If you're doing changeovers, then obviously you're going to be in the tree and you're going to be holding it and climbing up and moving your system using your lanyard. So the single rope is my favorite, my best, my favorite way to get into the tree. So I'm just going to pull this one down, it doesn't get in my way. All right, so it's out the way. Hopefully that one doesn't get too much in the way either. Right, so I'm going to clip in, just like before, tension my system. I'm going to test it. Obviously this has a bit more movement in it, because it's a bit higher. And because I'm on a single rope system, I'm just on this line. Um, I like to use the Kimura for both single and double. Um, this place is great for passing through the zigzag, but I find it's just a really good dual purpose rope really colorful i love the colors and uh, so far it's been pretty good with my ascenders it hasn't picked or frayed too badly at all anyways back to ascending so what i like to do first is i clip my foot ascender in okay and then i'm going to take my chest ascender or chesty yeah clip into that okay the reason why i have this on is um because I'm on the single rope technique, I don't have that extra leg of rope that is gonna drag the system up. So I have to move my climbing system. All right, so this is one way to do it. Or what we can use is your lanyard. So what you do, you just have your lanyard over your shoulder, right? And you can clip it into there. I clip into that because the hole is just not big enough to fit my carabiner through. Right, I'm just going to cinch it up and then as I put my weight into this, my shoulder is going to push against this and that is going to drag my system up. Okay, so if you don't have a chest ascender, that will work. Or you can just use a tape sling and give it a twist in the middle and then put it over your shoulders, kind of like a bra. So that works as well. So I got my foot ascender on. We're going to clip back into my chesty. Uh, this is the 4SRT one. This is probably my favorite. Um, it, it's nice because I like to lean back as I ascend and then uh, that kind of creates a bit more movement in here for my lungs and opens up my chest cavity. Um, so I like to do this first because in that way I can just kind of go like that, weight in, a couple steps off the ground and then I'll attach my what is called a knee ascender. So this is the Saka from Climbing Innovations. Um, it is awesome. This thing is rather old. So I'm just going to clip that into my foot, right? If you Google knee ascenders, there's all sorts of things that you can use at home to make your own. You don't necessarily have to buy one. Um, so I'm just going to attach that. Boom. We are ready to ascend. I know it looks like a lot, but realistically, you're probably already halfway there with a hitch and probably already a foot ascender. You just need to get a rope wrench and then maybe a knee ascender if you want. If not, a hand ascender works fine with a foot loop. Um, just use what you got and experiment. So to go up on this, I'm basically just going to walk up the rope. So that's why I like this chest center. I can lean back. I can talk to you. It's fine. You can put my hands above the wrench. Always have your hands above the wrench. So I'm just going to walk. I'm going to take a step. Right? I'm just going to walk up the rope. And hopefully you can still hear me if you can't see me. Take that off. Take that off. All right, we're gonna come down. Just like that. Okay? That's that one. 
I know SRT looks like a lot, but realistically, you're making the investment into yourself. Um, on a long ascent, it makes your life so much easier and you have a lot more options. I'm not saying SRT is definitely better than double rope, but to each their own really. And I think we'll talk about that later on the video. So I hope that little clip there kind of demonstrates um, the difference between the two. And we'll go into anchors a little bit up in the tree, okay? All right, so we're back in the tree. I'm kind of in a spot where I don't have any thin enough limbs just to clip my camera to, and I'm filming by myself, but uh, here we go. So as you can see, I'm still on my single rope system and I have installed my double rope system. As you can see here, um, I just use the Teufelberger pulley saver, which is, I really like this one. Um, I can make it longer or shorter as I see fit. So basically I just have this, this loop here. You put that over the limb and then you drop this pulley through. And when you are putting your rope in it, you put your splice or just the end of your rope through here first, thimble bit. You run it through the pulley, as you can see here, then back to myself. So when it retrieves, you have a little bobble that goes on the end of this. It pulls through, goes through the pulley, right? And then it catches this thimble. As you can see, there's a bit of a narrow spot right in there. So that, that little bobble catches that and it pulls this out of that ring right and then um, it'll just drag the whole system through whereas my anchor point here I've just done a cinch so I've used um, just a, a DMM anchor ring I've just done an alpine butterfly on it and it just cinches off on the limb um, nice and simple I was just gonna use this tie-in for whatever I was doing um, if I knew I was gonna move I wouldn't have used that one if I was going to move, I probably would have just cinched it with a running bowline and a backup because then that way when I get to that point, I can shift it really easily. Um, but like I said, we'll talk about anchors and stuff in a different video, but I think that kind of just shows the simple difference between the two. Um, a lot of times, like if I was working a big tree like this, it's a really nice oak that we have on the farm that we like to climb. Um, I probably would have used a, a mixture of systems. In the UK, obviously, we're supposed to be climbing on two systems, um, which is no big deal. Uh, I like to mix the two, really. I like to have a single system and a double system. It's nice having the two because then I have options because uh, doing double in a tree like this, for me, wouldn't work all the time because I could be doing a lot of redirects. So if I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of redirects, I'll put my weight mostly in my single line system. And obviously, I wouldn't use that anchor because to retrieve it through a bunch of redirects would just be an absolute nightmare. Um, so I would just drag my double system through with me. Pardon me, my nose is a bit runny. Um, yeah, so I would just kind of mix the two really. Some people like both single system, some people prefer both double, uh, whatever works for you. But if you're in a country that you don't need to worry about that, well, you can take your pick and be on one rope. Um, so that's nice. Um, I always like to have an access line in the tree after working in Germany and seeing how they work. I really appreciated that um, I think it's part of their law. If it's if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. But uh, that they always have to have an access line. So a lot of the the amazing climbers over there, um, they tend to go up on a static line and they'll have it base tied, and they'll just leave that line in the tree. And then it's uh, kind of a fail safe if things go sideways on them. Um, their grounds person or another designated rescue climber can can access the canopy really really quick. It's also nice because the trees there are absolutely massive. So if they, a lot of them prefer to work on the, on, on the double system, right? And uh, so they'll move around the canopy on their zigzag or their prusik, whatever it is that they're using. And um, they'll, they'll keep a device on them like the Taz or maybe the, the, the Akimbo now. And they'll just have that access line there. So if they work down one side of the tree, they can jump back on that access line to go back up and over to their, their next workstation. So I think that's really good. Um, I know there was a lot of um, apprehension, I think, in the beginning when SRT started started to be a thing. Um, some people don't want to even touch it because they think it's too, oh, it's too gear intensive, it's too expensive. It's really not. A lot of the things you can make at home, um, as far as like a knee ascender, it's really easy. Just Google it. There's loads of stuff on the internet of how to make your own with things that you already have. Um, and then, yeah, obviously a foot ascender uh, you probably have anyways from climbing double. And then uh, the chest ascender, you, you could just use like a, a tape sling or even your lanyard just over your shoulder. It's not a big deal uh, just to get into the canopy. And uh, 
Yeah, most people have a, a pulley and a hitch. Yeah, the um, the tether and the wrench are a bit expensive, but you know what? Once you get on it, you're gonna love it. Or even if, um, I didn't bring it with me. I don't think I have the chicane with me. Oh no, I do. I do have the chicane. Right, I'll show that one at the bottom. Um, it'll be just a bit easier than being up here. It's a bit windy and being one-handed trying to demonstrate tree gear is not the easiest thing to do. So we'll show that one at the bottom, but you can take your zigzag and you can turn it into a single line device. Um, so that may be a better investment for some people if they really like climbing on the zigzag, because then what you can do is you can ascend the tree on your single system with the chicane, take it off, swap your anchor around, boom, you're ready to work on double. All right, um, so I think that's pretty much it for the difference between single rope and double rope. Um, obviously you're still using the exact same rope. It's just the way you tie it off and the gear that you use. So I'll go down and I will show the application of the zigzag and the chicane. All right, cheers. All right, so I figured I'd just show you how I keep myself organized. Usually the top one, I always keep my single rope system on. The bottom one, I keep my double rope system on or if I'm on double single or double double, not like coffee. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's the nice thing about this koala harness is I can have nice two really clean bridges. Um, they're both the same length. Might go a bit shorter, I'm not sure. I just need to do some adjustment maybe. Um, so yeah, that's how I keep myself organized as far as gear goes. So we'll show you the chicane and how easy it is to just swap it out, all right? All right, so we're here. I'm just gonna pop this carabiner out because I already have one <clears throat> installed on my chicane. Um, sorry, it's just stuck on here. Take off the um, I've just hooked this on because I was using the older zigzag before. So because I'm using the new zigzag, I don't actually need this quick draw. This was just for um, chest ascender attachment. Um, and then I just got that bit of a grommet thing to keep it from sliding down. But if you don't have that, so you're not using this new one. You can just clip into the spine of your carabiner. I just didn't like it because my, my accessory carabiner was sliding up and down. I just didn't like the sound of it. So all we do is open that. Similar to the rope wrench, gives you that bend, clips it back on. So we're ready to go, just like that. Got a single line, so I just cinched it at the top. Right? So I can climb up that, get to the top where my anchor is, and then I can, uh, swap around so I just take that out right okay obviously I wouldn't throw it on the ground but I would just pop my carabiner back in rotate it around right and then I would just bring my my eye splice back to myself and then um, set my new anchor point and away we go all right, so because I have my Kimura line, we're just gonna use that. It isn't on the list of recommended ropes for the uh, CE Akindo, Akimbo. So we'll just show you anyways. Um, I don't have the different tether attachment on this. We just made some with throw line and some old tubing off a uh, tree motion harness. So I'm just gonna pop that in. It might take you a few times just to get it right. Close that up. It should look like that. Uh, we'll just put it on. So it grips fine because I think it's probably just too much friction anyways. Just turn the camera, make sure you can see me. Right, and then I would just, I would do the exact same thing I did before um, for climbing. Uh, it does have that one. So like I could clip into that if I wanted to. I don't like it because I like to lean back and it does have that panic feature um, if you were incapacitated. But what we've done, we just um, had a bit of throw line in a tube it just goes through that point there and then you just flip into that and it'll just drag the system up i don't see any different than what the hitch climber pulley is um the cable's good if that's what your option is you can use it double as well um i haven't tried that yet we only ever just use it as a single device so that's just another single line option or double um, but i prefer the zigzag i think it feels going to switch between the two uh yeah so there's that so I think that pretty much covers the difference between single line and double. Um, <clears throat> if you have any other questions, just pop them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Um, <clears throat> is one better than the other? I I'm, I'm not really sure. 
I think it all comes down to application and personal preference. I mean, I might want like one thing more than somebody else and they might like something different for different reasons. So realistically, I don't think one is better than the other. It's all in what you prefer. Same thing with devices. You can't really say, oh, well, that thing's crap. Well, yeah, it might be for somebody because it doesn't suit their climbing style, but it might be great for somebody else. So um, yeah, it just, Try, try different things if you, if you can. Um, just always remember low and slow. So don't tie into a big tree like this and expect to get off the ground and you're gonna be amazing. You always wanna start slow and low. So start from maybe the first limb on a tree. Get comfortable with it near the ground because in that way, if something goes funny um, or you don't understand something or it's not working correctly because you've installed it wrong by, by accident, obviously, um, you're, you're not gonna be in a bit of a pickle. Um, usually try to have a friend with you as well that knows. Uh, if you don't, maybe just FaceTime somebody or a nice Zoom call, chat over some gear, or even just put a rope over a beam. Uh, that's always a nice way of doing things. Um, don't try new things on a job site either. Uh, you're going to be feeling rushed as it is probably. Uh, unless you, you've got that allotted time, if, if you've made that time for yourself that day, yeah, go for it. But I think always try things that are new to you in a rec climbing scenario like today. Um, it's just nice to have some downtime and mess around and, and try different things. Um, so I'm thinking maybe my next video should be about different anchors. We could probably cover that. So we'll do single line tie-in and double line tie-in. We kind of covered a bit a few things there. Um, I missed out my snake tail because that's probably my, my favorite bit of kit. Um, so we'll talk about that maybe next week or something. Uh, yeah, so as always, any comments, questions, pop them down below. Give us a like, give us a share if you want with some friends. Um, maybe somebody who's new to climbing, they, that'll show, you know, some different things and give people some options. All right, so as always, take care and stay safe.